Now, if your dog's been in heat, if they've had a season and afterwards they've developed swollen nipples, then that's what I'm talking about today. You know, what do you need to know about this condition? Is it anything serious and how can you get them back to normal? And so let's jump into my first question from Katie, who writes that um, Maggie's nipples never went down entirely after her first heat at the end of February. So that's, you know, maybe kind of three months ago now. Um, we've never had a female dog before, so I thought that this was actually just normal. But today it got the better of me and so I Googled it and have seen a range of horrible things. What's going on? Well, I'll start off by saying that, so this is a young dog. They've had their season, you know, maybe three months or so ago. It's almost certainly going to be the result of something called a phantom pregnancy. Now this comes about because the hormone changes in a female dog's body after they've had a season, so after they've been on heat, they're actually very similar regardless of whether they're mated and get pregnant or whether they're not pregnant. So the hormone changes are very similar and that effectively tricks the body uh, into kind of believing that it's pregnant even when there's no chance that that could be the case. That can show as a range of different things, so we can get changes um, in behavior. So that can be restlessness, it can be irritability. Um, we can also get a reduction in appetite as well sometimes as well. Um, we can then go on and get mammary development. So we can get enlargement of the nipples, enlargement of the, the mammary glands. And in some cases we can actually get a lot of milk being produced. It's not unusual to have a few drops um, if you kind of squeeze those nipples and get a few drops of milk out. But some cases, um, some dogs can develop an awful lot of milk. And I think that's definitely the case if they're older, if they've had this a few times before, or if they have had puppies in the past. We can then also get nursing behavior in phantom pregnancy. So your dog might start to collect inanimate objects. So that could be socks, it could be toys, it could be shoes, um, and, and kind of nurse them, gather them together as though they're, um, you know, these objects are your dog's babies. And they can actually get very possessive over these things as well. Um, and that can, you know, even be, lead to aggression in some cases. Um, and then in other cases, we'll get an increased appetite and we'll get a weight gain as well. So that might even trick you even further into thinking that your dog's pregnant when they're not. Now, signs of phantom pregnancy, they typically come on at about 60 days after a heat, but that's really very rough. And some dogs like um, Maggie here will develop them and develop her kind of mammary enlargement just as soon as they come out of heat. Others, it will come on a little bit later. So maybe three, three and a half months that they'll be developing these signs of a phantom pregnancy. So, you know, there's a quite a broad range and it's really not that uncommon that this happens. Now, for those dogs that do develop phantom pregnancy, these signs do tend to get worse with each passing season. That's certainly my experience of it. Um, so, you know, that's something else to consider. If your dog is, you know, becoming a little bit obnoxious, if they're becoming a little bit aggressive this time round, then next season that's likely to be even worse. Now, when it comes to treating this, normally really we don't actually need to give them any treatment. So it will sort itself out by itself without any intervention um, in a couple of weeks. So that would be the normal situation. Now, if you want to help that kind of resolution take place, you can increase their exercise. You can also reduce their food intake um, and potentially even reduce their water intake a little bit, certainly if they're having a lot of milk, because um, that will then uh, kind of encourage the body not to produce that extra fluid in effect. You need to be a little bit careful of that, but certainly increasing exercise and cutting back on their diet, you know, generally is all that it takes if they need any help at all. Now for those dogs that are showing severe signs, maybe they're getting mastitis and I'll come on to that in just a second, you know, or if there are other things that they're doing that we really want it to stop right now, then there are hormone treatments available that we can give um, that will, you know, dry up any milk and it will reverse the signs of phantom pregnancy. You know, to be honest, um, I haven't needed to use this in any patient of mine for a long time um, and it's not something we often need to reach for but the option is there if there are particular concerns. You know also this condition does like I just suggested increase the risk of mastitis if there is milk present and especially if there's a lot of milk present um, and that'll be because the milk is being produced but there's no puppies there to draw the milk off so it sits there kind of gets a, a bit stagnant if you like um, and that increases the risk of infection. Now to know if your dog with a phantom pregnancy does have mastitis you know you just need to feel along their, their teats along their mammary glands if they're kind of very warm if it's becoming quite firm, if they're red, if they're painful, then that's going to really mean that mastitis is quite likely and we should get them checked over to check that they don't need any antibiotic treatment for that. Now, 
when it comes to eliminating the risk in the future, really spaying them is what's going to need to happen. Um, there's no other way that we can eliminate this risk um, short of giving them uh, drugs to stop them coming onto heat in the first place, which isn't necessarily the best idea because that could potentially increase the risk of pyometra. And that's a, a condition that I've discussed several times over on the Our Pets Health podcast or over at rpetshealth.com if you're interested in learning more about pyometra. But, you know, spaying is definitely something that we should think about. Certainly if you're not planning on breeding from your dog in the future, then getting them spayed is going to be a good idea. And if you're wondering about timing of spaying in general, if you've got a younger dog, you know, or if you've got a, a dog who's not yet gone through, either gone through a heat or gone through this problem, but you're thinking about spaying them and you're wondering about timing, again, head over to rpetshealth.com where I've got a, a full review about timing of spaying in dogs. Now, you know, that said, what the most likely thing is going to be in, in this young girl. Um, but swollen glands can also be a sign of other problems. So it can indicate mammary cancer. It's generally a condition of older dogs or certainly middle to older age dogs. Like it can be in, in, in a little bit younger in some cases. Pretty unlikely in Maggie's case just because she is so young. Now we can also get swollen glands obviously if a dog is pregnant and they're actually coming into milk because they're about to give birth. So that's something to think about. And then mastitis, like I say, can cause swollen glands. Um, but that would be maybe in a dog who's already given birth um, and the glands are just getting a bit firmer than they have been. Um, or like I say, a dog who's got phantom pregnancy um, and the glands have got infected that way. So, you know, that's really a rundown on phantom pregnancy. It's something that's really not that uncommon. It often doesn't need any treatment, but just keeping an eye that the, the mammary glands aren't getting swollen, they're not getting firm and they're not pain and everything should sort itself out. Of course, if you've got concerns, if you're not sure what's going on, you know, if you don't, if, if the glands are swelling up, if the, the nipples are swelling up and you don't think your dog's been in heat, then definitely getting checked over by your vet is going to be a good idea. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to dralexanswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.